I have Kiowa here, a non-releasable red tail hawk, and he just finished a bath and is loving the sun. And he's here to help us talk about an issue that severely affects his species all around the United States. Rat poisons, AKA rodenticides, are very bad. And I'm sure you guys have heard of some secondary poisonings, whether that's dogs, cats, hawks, owls, eagles. Yes, even eagles get secondary poisonings of rodenticides. But what are the alternatives to controlling your rodenticide problem? Well, today we have your answer. I'm Connor, and this is the American Eagle Foundation's first conservation product review. Hope you guys like it. Let's get started. Before we get started, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. That'll be a big help in sending this video out to people that might not know about us or the secondary rat poisoning, as well as hitting that subscribe button if you guys want to see more videos like this and more cool bird of prey content. So why should someone care about secondary poisonings? They're getting rid of the problem, right? The rodents. Well, yes, in the short term but in the long run, it could be actually causing a much larger issue. So the secondary poisonings are actually eliminating nature's rodent control. So let's take an example of, let's say a barn owl or a barn owl pair. So they live out in a barn near your house. The field is littered with mice. Well, those barn owls, the two of them, can hunt up to 2,500 mice per year. Let's say someone puts out rodenticides uh, in the house and then those uh, poisoned rodents do die but they die outside. Well that barn owl picks up the poisoned rodent and eats and consumes it and therefore the barn owls die. And now there's nothing to keep those mice in check that are out in the fields. Well now they're going to start encroaching on that, that person's property on that house and gets inside. Well that person is like I'm going to use more rodenticides and then let's say a kestrel pair comes in to kind of take care of all these mice that are around there because it's a lot of food um, that the kestrels noticed. Well, then those poisoned rodents also kill those kestrels. So I think you guys get the point. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. Nature does a great job of controlling rodents and you want to keep them around. One very recent and public incidents of secondary poisonings occurred at Southwest Florida Eagle Cam, where an eaglet E14 perished due to secondary rodenticide poisonings that the parents unknowingly brought into the nest. It, it's absolutely sad. Thousands of people watched E14 perish and, and it, it's so avoidable and, and so sad. So in honor of E14, let's talk about the alternatives. So what are the alternatives? Mouse traps, sticky traps, water traps, etc. There's a lot of products out there. Um, and side note, don't use sticky traps. The bycatch on them is really bad, really bad for wildlife. All these traps are not for the faint of heart and they're not necessarily the most humane ways of dispatching rodents. Thankfully, there's a better solution. Good nature, automatic, humane traps. This is a CO2 powered trap that humanely dispatches rats and mice. The CO2 will fire up to 24 times before needing to be changed. It has a non-toxic lure that lasts up to six months. It is durable to the elements and is specifically made to only dispatch target pests. We wanted to mention that Good Nature is not paying us to talk about this, but they were kind enough to send over their product for review and testing. And we're gonna put a link to the product in the description below. So we took our product to a location that was known to have a small rodent problem. In our testing, we focused on three key metrics, performance, ease of use, and cost effectiveness. So for the first metric, performance, it did as well as expected being in the small rodent area that we had. If there was a much higher populations of rodents, it would have performed a lot better, but it did get rid of one rodent, but we didn't have any bycatch or untargeted rodents or species. So that is a win in our book. Very good job. Let's talk about the second metric, ease of use. First off, I wanna say it mostly came in cardboard. Absolutely love that. Wish more companies would do that. 
We recycled the cardboard, makes life a lot easier, hardly any plastic, love it. Good job, good nature. So the install was very easy, just two screws to mount it to the pole, follow the instructions. It took about 10 minutes, but we were also doing a lot of photo shoots with it as well. I'm sure someone else could get it installed in under five minutes. It's very easy to install. The third metric, cost effectiveness. The basic kit cost $169.99, which comes with the trap, lure, two CO2 tubes, and three location test kits. The more advanced kit is the same as the basic. It just adds an electronic counter to tell you how many times the trap has fired. So the Good Nature Trap is a decent investment up front, but would definitely last you a long time. And the upkeep is, is minimal. It's just CO2 and lure purchases as needed. And it's kind of a set it and forget it type of trap with only needing to check it occasionally. There's no true way to calculate how much a barn owl or a kestrel is worth, but we know for sure that's worth keeping them around, using them as our nature's pest control. Having nature do what it's supposed to do and keeping the rodents at bay is definitely cost effective in the long run. It'll save you time, money, and, and frustration. So a few things that we learned about the Good Nature Trap when we were installing is read the instructions, read the instructions, read the instructions. Makes life a heck of a lot easier. And in the instructions, they talk about putting some of uh, these bait traps around. Um, some sample bait traps and this is really good for finding out where the rodents are. These sample bait traps uh, allow you to figure that out. So wherever the most nibble marks on these bait traps are is, is probably where you need to put the trap. So the trap can be pretty loud when it goes off. It's working effectively and there's nothing that they can do about this but uh, we had it mounted on a pole below a house underneath a deck and it did go off at night and did scare the homeowners but they did, it was funny and, and they did know that the trap was working. So just be cognizant of that. So the last thing that we learned is that the lure on top after a while can kind of drip a little bit and get the, uh, the trap a little sticky. So if you do have to move the trap, uh, just put on some gloves and it just makes life a little bit easier. So you're not installing the trap with sticky hands. But if you do get on your hands or on shirts or something like that, not a big deal, washes off very easily. Just a quick note from the editing desk, Good Nature has updated their trap that we just reviewed as now called the Home Trapping Kit. It looks like the installation process is so much easier. It's just setting it up on the ground and forgetting it. It solved the few issues that we saw in the original trap, where now we don't have to screw it into a pole that might not be at the location where you need the trap. You don't have to screw into a fence or even your home. It, it's very awesome that Good Nature was able to do that for their second version of this product, and we can't wait to see what else they're gonna come out with in the future. We love what this company stands for, and we're gonna for sure be recommending this trap over rodenticides and uh, mouse traps. It's more humane, we believe more cost-effective, and definitely benefits wildlife. This is a very complex issue and we couldn't go into every detail, but if you guys wanna come discuss this or have other alternatives to uh, rodenticides and mouse traps, or um, you have questions about the Good Nature Trap, you guys can come over and talk to us on our live stream over on Twitch, link in the description below.